Welcome to Mastara, as today we see off an old friend. The history of Fiatus was one of the first topics to hit the poll, and it has lingered for months in second place until this week. This week you decided you wanted to hear the history of the biggest big bad on the continent, Thyatis. So I dusted off the books and started looking into the nation's history, and discovered more plot holes than Disney's Star Wars sequels. Well, time to steal from iClaudius, Rome, and the 30 seconds of Caligula that I can actually mention and keep this channel PG. I'm Mr. Welch, and this is the history of Thyatis. For starters, I'm using the Dawn of the Emperor DM's book timeline rather than the player's book because the player's book is about as biased as it gets. Thyatians aren't the most trustworthy historians, and the official histories reflect that perfectly. But I won't be spoiling too much, just the ancient history that has no effect on the players. Thyatis actually starts on the southern continent of Devania, where they existed as three separate tribes named after the mountains that they each lived near. The Thyatians, the Corindans, and the Hadeans. They were part of the Millennian Empire for an indeterminate amount of time before they rebelled against the Millennians and fled north to the continent of Brune, where they established the nation and the regions that now bear their name. The Millennian Empire fell apart shortly after the Thyatians left, resulting in the nation largely being transported to the Hollow World. Thyatis then became three nations, who were allied, but they were separate. They had a strong history of piracy and were known as fierce warriors. With the arrival of the Alphatians, they found a new nation to attack and plunder, at least until the Alphatians grew tired of being attacked and decided the Thyatians would make wonderful new slaves. And like current day, Alphatian troops proved to be no match for the Thyatian warriors, but the Alphatian wizards have no equal among the Thyatians. Thyatis and his provinces all fell in the year 192 BC. Almost 200 years passed with Thyatis under the boot heel of the Alphatians. Finally, the governor of Corindus, Lucinius Transantibium, stages an uprising with the help of, of his friend and ally, Zendralian Tratiocanatus. In, instead of military might, they first use trickery and guile by eliminating the few Alphatian wizards ruling over them locally that aren't addicted to Zonga. This addiction to Zonga has crippled the Alphatian Empire, and the nation has fell into apathy, as it is famous for doing. The Alphatian Emperor was also taxing his subjects to the brink of revolt anyway, so it didn't take much to foment revolt. Lucinius began assassinating Alphatian governors in a series of rig duels where the drugged Alphatians stood no chance. When the Alphatians sent a fleet to crush the fledgling rebellion, Thyatian trickery and its skill at arms destroyed the Alphatian fleet as it arrived. Seeing Alphatia could be defeated, provinces all over the Alphatian Empire rose up in rebellion. Alphatia found itself short on allies, magic, gold, and soldiers, putting down all the revolts all over the Empire. The old Alphatian Emperor was deposed by his own people, and his successors sued for peace. Thyatis had won. During the revolt, Lucinius had gained allies with Ochalia and the Pearl Islands, who expected their freedom from Alphatia if Thyatis had won. This would have been the case, except for during a summit between the three powers, Lucinius's friend, quote-unquote, and General Zendralian committed the most famous piece of treachery in the empire, assassinating Lucinius and the kings of his allies, claiming the imperial throne for himself and taking over all the uh, Thyatian provinces. Zendralian then began a rapid expanse of the empire, while part of the empire found themselves in open revolt. The empire threatened to come apart at the seams because of his treachery, but 20 years after he grabbed power, he dies of natural causes. This leads to his wife, Valencia, gaining the throne. She quickly turns around the fortunes of Thyatis, regaining the nobles' loyalty by either bribes, threats, or, or example. She proves to be one of Thyatis' greatest leaders, giving her the moniker Valencia the Crusader by historians. She sets the standard for future Thyatian leaders, leaving the empire at one of its highest peaks when she finally leaves the throne. The empire begins to expand in AC 150, starting with the invasion of Yalarum. Alphatia sees the expansion of Thyatis as a threat, and in return invades the northern part of Yalarum, splitting the smaller nation between the two empires, and starting a border war that Yalarum still bears the scars of even today. Thyatis gains a reputation for harsh reprisal that is exemplified with the Hattian Revolt in AC 313, when the entire province declares that it's independent and rejects Thyatian culture. The response is to send in multiple legions to the island that proceed to sack every single city in the province, as well as throw down every city wall in Hadias. To drive the point home after the culling of the Hadian leadership, the province is uh, forever forbidden from building city walls again, a law that is still in effect even seven centuries later. Thyatis expands even further in 571 AC with the conquest of Irindi. While it turns out to be cost prohibitive to completely occupy the islands, Thyatis instead creates numerous penal colonies and ships over large numbers of its criminals, fully expecting them to die of tropical disease. The prisoners are abandoned to their fate for the most part. In addition, Thyatis claims parts of the five shires, even though it doesn't press into the mainland there. Three decades later, the Irindi revolt, pushing off the Thyatians. The initial Thyatian reprisals are defeated until a Irindi navy destroys a Thyatian expeditionary force that finally convinces the Thyatian the Irindi aren't worth it, which also secures Irindi's reputation as the most feared navy in Mastara. 
In 728, Thyatis does begin partial settlement of what would become Glantry, even though it was never in any great numbers because of the distance involved. This stops when the Flemish conquer all the new settlers in the area, although a year later they would be defeated by a combined force led by an Alphatian lord who claims the land for Alphatia. Forty years after that, a Thyatian named Alexander Glantry would liberate the land from Alphatia, but it makes that a sovereign nation in its own right instead of returning it to Thyatis. In 827, al Kalim of Yalarim forces Alphatia out of Yalarim, and then three years later, the last Thyatian colony falls, leaving Thyatis only with their province of Tel Akbir, which remained loyal to the empire over Yalarim. That would be the extent of Thyatian influence in the nation of Yalarim. In 900 AC, Emperor Gabrionis IV decides Thyatis needs to grow and grow quickly and begins an invasion of the Isle of Dawn, as well as conquering Traladara to the west. Fifty years later, Auslan becomes a formal ally of Thyatis as it's breaking apart from its own separatists. This leads to the second full-blown war with Alphatia as Thyatis has broken almost every treaty they've signed with the Alphatians. The Spike Invasion happens in 960, when Alphatia quickly overruns the Isle of Dawn and makes with haste for Thyatis City. Gabronius V is quickly killed, and Alphatia threatens to sack the capital, until the gladiator Thrain Kel Torsen rallies the troops and leads a large contingent of soldiers and gladiators to push back the invasion from Thyatis City. He then declares himself Emperor Thincall I and purges the military of any officers he considers a threat. He pushes back Alphatia to previous borders and threatens to, uh, even more conquest until the Alphatian Emperor abdicates and his daughter, Empress Ariadna, takes control and negotiates a peace with Thyatis. That concludes the official timeline. While in Vinfold, it's also leaving a ton of holes in the timeline that can be filled. There's a lot of unexplained bits in the history of Thyatis that comes mostly from the Red Steel source book. That box set mentions a Thyatian province called Ispen that's got a Spanish vibe that appears nowhere in anything previously. There's a massive continuity error all over the place. Nothing in Thyatis is remotely Spanish in theme. Thyatis is Rome, Corinthus is Byzantium, and Hadius is the Holy Roman Empire. If you wanted to make sense of that, make Ispen a former part of Glantry where the settlers from Thyatis settled and they were influenced by the Belkides elves until they moved on because of the various Glantrian politics. Also, how far Thyatis reached is left unclear. Irindi, Traladara, Yalarum, and parts of the Five Shire are confirmed, but considering there's not much stopping them militarily, they could have easily expanded at least partly into Derekin and the Northern Reaches, even if just for a little bit in their timeline, long before the contraction of the Empire today. So little of the actual timeline has been filled, it's hard for a nation based on Rome to justify staying so small for so long. Another point you could fill in is the emperors. There's maybe 10 named emperors in Mastara lore. This is in a nation that's been around for a millennia, and more importantly, is also known for its treasury. Rome, on average, went through an emperor every eight years. So if you keep to that timeline, you've got 125 emperors. Some might rule for decades, while a large number of them don't make it a year. There's some precedent in this number of emperors in, with the Irindi book, because it shows that Thyatis names its ships after emperors. And the ships they have listed include emperors like Adriano the Tenth, Julian the Seventeenth, and Olivia the Sixth. That leaves a lot of emperors to fill in, but it does give you at least two dozen to start with. The most recent event that doesn't get hardly any mention in either the Karamikos or the uh, Thyatis Gazetteers is the conquest of Traladara itself, because that doesn't happen very far back on the timeline. It is very possible that some of the longer-lived races took part in that invasion on either side and could tell you about it. You could fill in the parts of the general that led the invasion, or talk about the Trolladaran kings that were before that. Or have something about the governors that ruled in the hundred years between the conquest of uh, Trolladara and uh, Stefan Karamikos trading his lands to become the uh, sole ruler of it. The future of Thyatis is uncertain, especially with the unpopular nature of Wrath of the Immortals. Thin Call dies, Thyatis becomes a broken shell of itself, and can't fight nations a fraction of its size. In my t 1005 timeline, Thin Call still dies, but to treachery rather than the displeasure of immortals. But Thyatis remains the, the greatest military threat to other nations, though it is still reduced in strength and facing a united alliance to its west, but an equally blooded Alphatia to its east. How you want to deal with Thyatis' future is up to you. It's a bloody long history, but it's one that still has a lot of holes in it. That finishes up the long-suffering history of Thyatis, clearing up the top spot again. I'm recording this early, uh, so this will be posting on Saturday. I just hope there's not a run of voting for another topic. Replacing the history of Thyatis on the poll will be the leaders of Mastara, though the poll might be a few days until I get back. 
But until then, you have got to love a state that takes almost two days to cross.